Okay. Why don't we have a discussion and see if you could figure this one out. We think we're so advanced with our computers and our technology. Oh, we figured everything out. You know what every branch of science has had in common now for the past several thousand years? They've always thought that their shit was right. And then 20, 30 years later, sometimes more, sometimes less, they were always proven wrong. The people in just the very near future were like, oh, those people were morons. Yeah, they had everything wrong. We think we're so right. We understand how things work. We certainly don't. Let's explain something that Mother Nature doesn't deal in. Dualities, okay? There's no such thing as a wave-particle duality. What we think we understand about light is an absolute absurdity. You know, uh, people always quote to me, uh, well, Walter Russell. Well, I'm the person that digitized Walter Russell's works, by the way. I'm very familiar with Walter Russell's writings and extremely familiar with uh, Nikola Tesla's writings on light. The one thing Walter Russell did get right is Walter Russell said that light does not travel. Well, sure, it travels, right? <sighs> yeah, that's what we think. Russell never defined a field. He never understood electromagnetic retardation. That's exactly what it's called. He never understood phase shift. He never defined a field. Neither did Tesla, for that matter. Well, sure they did. I have a lot of people say, oh, you're not the first person to discover this. I'm like, really? Why don't you go show me a damn quote where anybody else is talking about this stuff? I mean, I'm about to quote Tesla. I just quoted you, Walter Russell, other than the quotes that I'm about to give you. They said nothing further on the matter. So if you think someone else came up with it first, then maybe you should point me to a quote where you think it exists if somebody discovered it first, because it doesn't exist in a whole. Obviously, they discovered parts of it. So Walter Russell is certainly correct in saying that light does not travel. That certainly goes against our modern conception of light propagating through space. Well, space has no properties. There's nothing to propagate through space. Well, what about a medium? Well, some things propagating through the ether, I medium. Well, there's nothing propagating through that medium, but let's discuss that in a second. Let's first start off with a person. By the way, most people don't know this. See, people have actually uh, ridden me, uh, ridden me uh, right down the road and talking about uh, calling Einstein an idiot and a moron, but I'll first point you to the fact that the person that actually invented the modern world, Nikola Tesla and others, they specifically called Einstein an idiot. So even if I never said Einstein was a moron, we still have Nikola Tesla who said that Einstein was a fool and an idiot and a beggar clad in purple robes who others thought was, uh, you know, genius but was a moron. So there we have Nikola Tesla's view of Albert Einstein in which he says that Einstein's an idiot. Here we have Einstein saying, speaking of like wave particles, or just light. Here's Einstein on light. We are faced with a new kind of difficulty. We have two contradictory pictures of reality. Separately, the particle and the wave theory of light, neither of them fully explains the phenomenon of light, but together they do. Really? And he actually called this a das liquant. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the photon is a completely arbitrary concept. It has absolutely no basis in reality. None whatsoever. Let's get to that. But let's first uh, give a quote from Nikola Tesla. April 8th, 1934. Um, from the New York Times, uh, no less. So this is a Nikola Tesla. There's something very frightening about the universe. We consider only our senses and uh, our sound make it beautiful. The universe is uh, darker than the darkest ink. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Let's get on to light. The false electromagnetic theory of light, advanced by Maxwell and subsequently experimentally investigated by Hertz, was so great that even now, although controverted, the, he means idiot, scientific minds are under its sway. So Nikola Tesla is basically saying everybody's a dumbass in as far as what they believe or understand what light is. This is Nikola Tesla, okay? This theory supposed the existence of a medium which was solid yet permitted uh, bodies to pass through it without resistance. Um, he's actually attacking false uh, premises of uh, ether, and there are many, many different uh, views of the ether. Tesla, of course, supported the ether, but he did not support, you know, misapprehensions of the medium, i.e., the ether. Yet, according to our conceptions of mechanical principles and ages of experience, such a medium was absolutely impossible. Light was wrongly considered to be such a phenomena bound up in that kind of medium. What then can light not be if not a transverse vibration? I consider this uh, topic extremely important. Light cannot be, are you listening closely, anything but a longitudinal, okay, longitudinal, you know what that word means? S disturbance in the ether, okay, this is Nikola Tesla talking, okay. Light cannot be anything but a longitudinal disturbance in the ether. This is Nikola Tesla. Involving alternate, com alternate to compressions and rarefactions. Exactly what I said. 
Light can be nothing else than a like a sound wave in the ether. In other words, he's actually saying that uh, light is like uh, you know literally sound propagation. Obviously, nothing is reaching out of our mouths. We're causing a disturbance in the air, which is causing uh, frequencies and harmonics to actually propagate not through the medium, but of the medium. Now, here's the shit that you and the rest of the world don't understand. If you don't get anything out of this video other than this, let's, let's talk about something here. Let's go back to what Walter Russell said, okay? Walter Russell said that light does not travel. There's no such thing as traveling light. He's absolutely right. If you think that a light bulb emits light or a laser emits light or the sun emits, lights, then, emits light, then you're an idiot. You're an absolute undeniable idiot, but that's okay. Most other people are idiots or too. If we have 95% of the world that believes in the same bullshit, it's not that you're an idiot, it's that you've been brainwashed by the fact that humanity has not evolved. Oh, that's such an arrogant statement. Well, it's the truth. Light doesn't have any speed. It's a rate of induction. Light is not propagating. Now, here's the important point. Light is not propagating through any medium, okay? It's not like we're throwing a spear through the water at a fish, right? Light is not propagating through the medium, i.e. the ether. Light is the propagation of the perturbation of that medium. What the hell does that mean? Well, you stick a guy in the middle of a pond, he starts flapping his arms. Are any of you stupid enough to believe that the guy is reaching his arms out to either shore? You know, there's something of the guy being emitted to the other shore where the waves are lapping. You know, he's splashing in the middle of the pond, right? Is the guy emitting anything? No, he's causing, causing a perturbation in the medium, i.e. the waters that he's in. Do you think that your mouth is emitting anything when you actually talk? No, you're actually causing compressions at certain uh, cycles per second, certain amplitude through the air, right? Right. This is what the fuck Walter, Re uh, Walter Russell meant and Nikola Tesla meant when they said that light does not travel, that's what Walter Russell said. Nikola Tesla said the same thing. When Nikola Tesla said that there's nothing actually traveling uh, through the years, what can light not be? I consider it extremely important. Light cannot be anything but a longitudinal disturbance of the ether. Okay? Light is not propagating. Light does not travel. The sun does not emit light. A light bulb is inside of a glass vacuum sealed. It's actually the air is sucked out and some argon, argon is pumped in. Some uh, actual LEDs and whatnot are uh, completely not ones like these, but professional ones are actually vacuum sealed to make them last longer. Nothing is propagating outside of this LED or outside of a light bulb. Light isn't traveling. This, these things are not emitting light. Well, sure they are. I can see the light. It's traveling to the, through the lens, and then it's hitting the back of the sensor, and it's being recorded. No. These things are no different than actually crying out light or talking light. You know, I'm talking. It's being transmitted as a perturbation in the air, which is hitting this microphone condenser, being recorded. The same thing is happening with light. Light is no different than sound. Well, what, you know, we know that sound is propagating through the air. No, sound doesn't propagate through the air. You know there's a speed of sound? No, there's not a speed of sound. It's a rate of induction. Sound has a rate of induction, which means the maximum tra traversable speed that is allowable. We know we have Doppler shift. Okay, we can get. A, I can discuss this for hours and hours and hours. Talk about Doppler shift. Uh, so we also have red shift and blue shift and light. You kind of know how Doppler shift, like, eh, you know, as a car comes by, like an ambulance, you know that Doppler shift. Same shit exists with light. The only thing we have are two different mediums, okay? Medium of sound and the air. My mouth is not emitting anything. My mouth is setting up a perturbation of the air, meaning the air is doing this number, right? The sun, these LEDs, these things are not emitting light. If you think that these things are emitting light, you're an idiot. Humanity is not intellectually involved enough yet to understand what Walter Russell and Nikola Tesla said. You are not. We are not collectively. Some of us, however, are. Oh, God, that's so arrogant. God, you're an arrogant bastard. But am I right? <laughs> but am I right? So do you understand that one statement? The most important crux of this. And if you understand nothing else, you better understand that. Light is not propagating through a medium. Light is the propagation of the medium, which has a maximum rate of induction, which we call the speed of light. Except it's not a speed, it's a rate of induction. 
We've got two mediums, sound, the medium is the air. We can, obviously can't talk in outer space, right? There's no air, right? We go, ah, I can't hear anything, right? Out in space, right. No air, nothing to vibrate. The ether is everywhere, <laughs> obviously. You want to understand some really important stuff, something that science has never answered? Why, sure they've answered it. We know everything about optics. Oh, really, do we? Do we really? Let's get that to the second. Light is a field perturbation. It's a longitudinal propagating pulse perturbation with transverse electromagnetic uh, divergent discharges. You know, opposite to uh, conventional phenomena, if you don't understand counter space, and uh, Eric Dollard said this, and if Eric Dollard said nothing else of importance, the one thing he said that was really accurate, this guy's a genius, written several books, he's kind of like half madman. I used to talk to him on the phone, he's a very intelligent guy. Calling him a madman is a bit of a compliment, because even he would say he's a madman. I love Eric Dollard. I mean, he's half crazy, kind of like me, but completely intelligent. And one thing he said is that if you don't understand counter space, then you don't under... And I'm going to paraphrase him, but this is basically what he meant. Because he loves to cuss, too, by the way. Let me tell you what. I've talked to... Derek Dollard loves to cuss, and that's okay by me. He basically said, if you don't understand counter space, you don't understand jack shit. You're never going to understand field theory. You kind of see this, that we have higher frequency here. Here we have lower frequency. You know, in conventional things, like a bigger a box, the more shit it could hold. Well, when it comes to field theory, the smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. You know? Smaller space, higher the capacitance. We move towards the blue end of the spectrum, shit gets dangerous. Hmm. Do you know what I know something else also interesting nobody's ever made mention of or nobody's ever noticed? Along the entire breadth of the electromagnetic spectrum, do you know where visible light sits? Do you know where visible light sits on the electromagnetic spectrum? It sits right here. If this were the electromagnetic spectrum, it sits right here. Do you know what's on either side of visible light? Okay, visible light's right here. We have the uh, near end here. We have the yeah, we have the near end, and we have the uh, the far end over here. Light sits right here. Do you know what you know where light sits on the electromagnetic spectrum? It sits right at the junction of. If you take the whole as one, light sits at the ratio of phi to one. On the entire electromagnetic spectrum, visible light. It's all electromagnetism, right? Actually, it's technically, light is not merely electromagnetic. It is a circuit. It is a transverse coaxial circuit, okay? It's not merely electromagnetic transverse. I mean, that's like saying that, uh, you know, most people don't know what the hell a coax cable is. Like, everything's going on between the shielding. It's like, well, what's that center conductor there? Light is a coaxial circuit. Light sits, visible light, the shit that we see sits right on the electromagnetic spectrum between phi and one. In other words, if you take the entire electromagnetic spectrum and you divide it at a rate of phi to one, light, visible light, sits right at the junction between phi to one. Oh, how important is that? Golden ratio, golden section. Oh, go figure that one. Here's something else that science will never explain to you. You know, you see, light, which of course is not a speed, it's a rate of induction. You know, there's nothing inside light that can speed it back up again. It's kind of like if you hit your brakes on your car, you're going to have to apply gas or energy to speed that fucker back up, right? You go to a stoplight, you put on the brakes. To speed back up, you actually have to apply force, the release of energy, via the gas tank, right? Well, when light passes through glass, it speeds down by, what, 18% or something like that? Depends on the type of glass that it is. Now, <clears throat> science has never explained how light speeds back up again. Well, light passes through water, it slows down. When it passes through glass, it slows down. This is what causes chromatic aberration, too, by the way. And this is also why blue light goes wah, and red light does not do that. It does some get deflected as it's passing through glass, but nowhere near as much as higher capacitance glass. Okay, this would be like blue light, higher capacitance. Lower capacitance. In other words, higher capacitance. By the way, glass is a capacitor. No, no, glass is an insulator. There's no such thing that is entirely a capacitor or entirely a resistor. Everything in the universe is capacitance, uh, excuse me, uh, capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. There's no such thing as a pure capacitor or a pure resistor or a pure insulator. Glass is also a fucking capacitor. No branch of science, no, no, Let's start off with uh, actually talking about the important thing. No branch of science has ever defined what the F a field is. They never can and they never will. Because everything is fields and fields are not particles. And all of current science is atomism. Okay, you know what that word is? Atomism. You don't know what the hell the word atomism means. You need to look at the fuck up. Because that's what all of modern science is, is atomism. Everything is a field and fields are not particles. The only thing that science can't explain, not the only thing, 
science can't explain is why light will speed back up again to its uh, prior rate of induction as it leaves the glass. Okay, it enters the glass and it slows down. As it leaves the glass, it speeds back up again. It doesn't speed back up again because there's nothing propagating through the glass. The glass is a resistor and a capacitor. It's an insulator. Well, you know, light is electrical, bitches. You know, how the hell do you think solar cells work? Glass is also a capacitor. If you don't believe me, just type in Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the dissectable capacitor, where they show you that glass is a fucking capacitor, okay? You know, in a camera lens, there's a lot of glass. All that glass is a capacitor. That's why lenses that have a shitload of glass in them, that's why they have poor microcontrast. Poor microcontrast or the intertonal details are lost after it passes through a crap load of glass in, say, a 22-element lens, okay? So science can never explain that. You know, there's nothing with inside light that's going, we need to release more energy. You know, we're going to speed back up again. Because people think that light is something propagating. Light is not something propagating. Light is the propagation of the perturbation of the medium itself. You know, our mouths are not emitting anything. They're causing a perturbation in the air. A light bulb is not fucking emitting anything. It is a perturbation in the air. Oh, except not that air. We're talking about the ether. We're talking about the universal medium that is anywhere and everywhere. But it is nowhere. Inertia has no Cartesian coordinate. What does that mean? Oh, I could talk about this for days and days and days, and people still wouldn't get it. I'd be perfectly logical, logical straight down the board. People are like, oh, I still don't get it. It's like, good. You might never get it. <laughs> Red shift and blue shift, for example, prove that light is a rate of induction moving towards blue shift. Higher capacitance, which equals less electromagnetic uh, retardation. That's technically what it's called, too. EMR, electromagnetic retardation. Look it up. Dr. Oleg D. Oleg D. Jefeminko, huge ass book with all the math in the world. Got two PhDs. He's dead now. Rest his soul. Oh, money and Patrice and Filian Spiritus Sancta. Just joking about that part. Um, PhD. Wrote a huge book on that topic. Um, speed and phase. They're all rates of induction. Um, the wave particle duality does not exist. We think that light is something that's moving through something else. It's not. It's a field perturbation. A field of what? We're talking about the field. There is only one field. We think that electricity is one thing, and gravity is another thing, and magnetism is another. Human race is so effing uh, brain dead. We actually think that these these things are different shit. Like you know, it is a stupid to think that electricity is one thing and gravity is another thing and magnets. It is stupid to believe that as as it is to be mentally um, brain dead and think that water is one thing, steam is another thing, and ice is another. Well, we got water here and steam here and ice here, and there's three different. Th it's like no asshole. They're all water. There's no such thing as an autonomous field modality known as gravity as dielectric acceleration. Magnetism, that's the loss of inertia. The only thing that actually gives volume to the entire universe is magnetism. Anyway, I can make like a thousand videos on this and still about that many people would get it. <laughs> um, light is not a particle. The notion of a photon particle has no basis in reality. Absolutely fucking none. The notion of a das Liquant or uh, the particle, the, the light quanta, das Liquant, is a complete fabrication. It is a human conceptual reification of something due to the misapprehension of the nature of light. Pulse perturbations, okay? Pulse perturbations. Well, you know what? When we have a pulse of, uh, of light, it's kind of like a, a particle, so we're going to call that shit a photon. Yeah, maybe after a long day of shooting with my camera, I need to empty the camera out because, you know, it's full of photons. I mean, you know, only stupid humanity could come up with this bullshit. Photon particles. Give me a break. Give me a break. Anyway, if you like this video, you could drop a buck or two, tell me to jump off a cliff, but if you want to debate this, you will lose. If you want to debate it... I will throw so much stuff at you, proverbially speaking, that you will lose miserably. So, not saying don't try. Try all you want, but you're not going to get anywhere. Because I'll throw some stuff at you that you'll never be able to explain. Never. Like light speeding back up again? You're never going to explain that shit. Because your prem premise is that light is something that's propagating. And you're never going to explain it via that. Because it's impossible. Because it's an unreality like unicorns and leprechauns. The shit doesn't exist. <laughs> Wise up! Oh my god, that's asking too much of humanity to wise up. Well, sure it is.